Hey everyone, Josh here, and let's be honest, we live in a world increasingly dominated by ones and zeros. Our lives, our work, even our refrigerators are all interconnected through the digital ether. But this interconnectedness, as convenient as it is, has a dark side. Because today we're diving headfirst into the shadowy world of cyber warfare and espionage, exploring five cyber attacks that sent shockwaves through the internet and beyond. We're talking about events that forced the world to wake up and realize that the digital realm isn't some abstract concept. It's where we live, and it's vulnerable. From crippling ransomware attacks to state-sponsored espionage that reads like a spy thriller, these incidents expose the fragility of our digital infrastructure and the very real consequences of cyber attacks. And trust me, these stories aren't just lines of code and blinking cursors, they're about real-world chaos, economic turmoil, and geopolitical tension. So buckle up, because over the next few chapters, we're going deep into the trenches of cyber warfare, analyzing the tactics, the fallout, and the lasting impact of these attacks. We'll uncover the stories behind the headlines, the brilliant minds behind the keyboards, and the lessons we can learn from these digital disasters. Before we get started, we want to give a shout out to our channel members Derek and David thanking them for their support. Also don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our content. Let's dive in. Our journey begins in 2010, with a piece of malware so sophisticated, so stealthy, that it seemed ripped straight from the pages of a Tom Clancy novel. This was no ordinary piece of malicious software, it was a game changer in the world of cyber warfare. The year 2010 marked a pivotal moment in the history of digital security, as the world was introduced to Stuxnet, a name that would soon become synonymous with cyber espionage and digital sabotage. This wasn't some credit card stealing spam sending virus, this was Stuxnet, a digital weaponized phantom designed for one purpose, to sabotage Iran's nuclear program. Unlike the typical viruses that aim to steal personal information or disrupt minor systems, Stuxnet had a far more sinister goal. It was meticulously crafted to infiltrate and cripple the nuclear capabilities of a nation, showcasing the terrifying potential of cyber weapons. Imagine a world where digital weapons could transcend the virtual realm and wreak havoc in the physical world. This was no longer a concept confined to science fiction, it was a reality. Stuxnet demonstrated that a piece of code could have tangible, destructive effects on physical infrastructure. The boundaries between the digital and physical worlds were blurring, and the implications were profound. That's exactly what Stuxnet did. It was a silent invader, a ghost in the machine, that managed to achieve what many thought was impossible. By targeting the very heart of Iran's nuclear program, it sent shockwaves through the global community, highlighting the vulnerabilities of even the most secure systems. It infiltrated the highly secure Natanz nuclear facility in Iran, not by brute force but by stealthily hopping from computer to computer, like a digital ninja, until it reached its target, the programmable logic controllers, the brains controlling the centrifuges enriching uranium. These controllers were the critical components that regulated the delicate process of uranium enrichment, and Stuxnet had them squarely in its sights. And here's where things get really interesting. The genius of Stuxnet lay not just in its ability to infiltrate, but in its method of attack. It was designed to operate under the radar, avoiding detection while it carried out its mission. This required an unprecedented level of sophistication and understanding of both the target systems and the human operators who managed them. Stuxnet didn't just want to shut down the centrifuges, it wanted to make them self-destruct while simultaneously feeding false information to Iranian engineers, making them believe everything was functioning normally. This dual approach of physical sabotage and digital deception was revolutionary. The engineers relying on the data provided by their systems were completely unaware of the impending disaster. It was a masterpiece of deception, a digital illusion that masked a very real attack. The centrifuges, spinning at incorrect speeds, would eventually tear themselves apart, all while the monitoring systems reported that everything was within normal parameters. This level of trickery required an intimate knowledge of the target's operations and a deep understanding of how to manipulate both machines and humans. The world watched in awe and fear as a seemingly invisible enemy infiltrated one of the most secure facilities on Earth exposing the vulnerability of critical infrastructure to cyber warfare. The implications were staggering. If a piece of malware could cause such damage to a heavily fortified nuclear facility, 
What could it do to other critical infrastructures like power grids, water supplies, or financial systems? Stuxnet wasn't just a virus. It was a wake-up call, a digital shot heard around the world, signaling the arrival of a new era of warfare. The age of cyber warfare had dawned, and with it came a new set of challenges and threats. Nations around the globe had to rethink their security strategies, recognizing that the battlefield had expanded into the digital realm. The lessons learned from Stuxnet would shape the future of cybersecurity and defense as the world braced for the next wave of digital threats. From the shadowy world of nation-state espionage, we shift gears to a cyber attack that hit close to home for billions, the Yahoo breach. This event wasn't just another headline, it was a wake-up call for the digital age, a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities that lie beneath the surface of our interconnected world. This wasn't a surgical strike on a nuclear facility, this was a digital tsunami that swept through the internet, compromising the data of 3 billion Yahoo accounts. Yes, you heard that right, billion with a B. Imagine a wave so massive that it engulfs everything in its path, leaving no stone unturned. That's what this breach felt like to the millions of users who suddenly found their personal information exposed to the world. In 2013 and 2014, hackers, believed to be state-sponsored, infiltrated Yahoo's defenses, gaining access to a treasure trove of personal information. This wasn't a random act of cyber vandalism, it was a calculated, methodical operation that took months if not years to execute. The hackers were patient, biding their time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Names, email addresses, passwords, security questions, the kind of information that, in the wrong hands, can be used to unlock the doors to your digital life. Think about it, your email address is often the key to your online identity and your password is the lock. When both are compromised, it's like handing over the keys to your house to a complete stranger. You name it, they probably stole it. The scale of the theft was unprecedented, and the implications were far-reaching. It wasn't just about the immediate loss of data, it was about the long-term consequences for the victims who would have to deal with the fallout for years to come. It was a stark reminder that even tech giants, the gatekeepers of our digital lives, weren't immune to the ever-evolving threat of cyber attacks. These companies, which we trust with our most sensitive information, are constantly under siege from hackers who are always looking for new ways to breach their defenses. The sheer scale of the breach was staggering, making it the largest data breach in history at the time. It was a record that no one wanted to break, a dubious distinction that highlighted the growing threat of cybercrime in the digital age. It sent shockwaves through the tech industry forcing companies to re-evaluate their security protocols and users to confront the uncomfortable reality that their digital lives were far more vulnerable than they thought. The breach was a catalyst for change, prompting a renewed focus on cybersecurity and the need for better protection of personal information. The Yahoo breach wasn't just about stolen data, it was about a fundamental erosion of trust. Trust is the foundation of the digital economy, and when that trust is broken, the consequences can be devastating. Users began to question the security of their online accounts, and companies were forced to take a hard look at their own security practices. Trust in the digital services we rely on, the breach was a stark reminder that our digital lives are only as secure as the companies that protect them. When those companies fail, the consequences can be far-reaching, affecting not just the victims of the breach but the entire digital ecosystem. Trust in the companies that promise to protect our information the breach was a wake-up call for the tech industry, a reminder that even the most sophisticated security measures can be breached by determined hackers. It was a call to action, prompting companies to invest in better security and to take a more proactive approach to protecting their users' data, and trust in the very fabric of our increasingly interconnected world. The breach was a reminder that we are all connected and that the security of our digital lives is a shared responsibility. It was a call to action for users, companies, and governments to work together to protect our digital future. It was a digital earthquake that left a lasting impact on the cybersecurity landscape. The breach was a turning point, a moment that changed the way we think about cybersecurity and the need for better protection of our digital lives. It was a reminder that in the digital age, we are all vulnerable and that we must all work together to protect our digital future. All right, let's talk about WannaCry. Imagine this. It's 2017, you're at the hospital, maybe you're about to have a life-saving surgery, or maybe you're just there to visit a loved one. 
Suddenly, computers start flashing, systems shut down, and chaos ensues. That was the reality for thousands across the globe when the WannaCry ransomware attack hit. See, WannaCry wasn't just some digital nuisance, it was like a digital pandemic. It spread like wildfire, exploiting a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows, affecting over 200,000 computers in over 150 countries. This wasn't about stealing information, this was about disruption, pure and simple. WannaCry locked down critical systems and demanded ransom in Bitcoin. Hospitals had to turn away patients, surgeries were postponed, and entire networks were held hostage. The scariest part? This wasn't some elaborate scheme orchestrated by a shadowy organization. It was effective, yes, but also surprisingly indiscriminate. WannaCry infected anyone and everyone it could, highlighting a crucial aspect of cybersecurity. Even seemingly small vulnerabilities can have massive real-world consequences. This wasn't just about stolen data, this was about lives put on hold, about the fragility of our increasingly digital world. Okay, so picture this. Hollywood, 2014. The city is buzzing with its usual glamour and glitz. The iconic Hollywood sign stands tall overlooking a city that never seems to sleep. The stars are out, the red carpets are rolled, and Sony Pictures is gearing up for the release of a new comedy called The Interview. Sounds pretty standard, right? Celebrities are posing for the cameras, fans are screaming, and photographers are capturing every moment. It's the kind of night that Hollywood lives for. Well, what happened next was anything but. Behind the scenes, far from the flashing lights and glamour, a different kind of drama was unfolding. One that involved lines of code, not lines of dialogue. This wasn't your typical Hollywood drama. This was a real-life cyber thriller, the kind that makes you question everything you thought you knew about security and secrecy. Imagine the tension of a high-stakes movie, but this time, the stakes were real and the consequences were far-reaching. See, the interview wasn't just any comedy, it was a bold satire that dared to poke fun at one of the most secretive and authoritarian regimes in the world. It was a satire about North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, and let's just say the North Korean government wasn't exactly thrilled about it. In fact, they were more than just displeased, they were outraged. The film depicted a fictional plot to assassinate Kim Jong-un, a storyline that was bound to ruffle some feathers. In fact, they were so not thrilled that they decided to take matters into their own hands, digitally speaking. This wasn't just a case of angry letters or diplomatic protests. No, they went straight for the jugular. What followed was a massive cyber attack, the likes of which Hollywood had never seen before. It was a meticulously planned and executed operation designed to cause maximum damage and embarrassment. Hackers, allegedly backed by North Korea, infiltrated Sony Pictures systems, gaining access to a treasure trove of sensitive data. This wasn't just a simple breach, it was a full-scale invasion. This wasn't just scripts and budgets, though those were compromised too. The hackers went deep, pulling out everything they could find. We're talking about private emails between executives, unreleased film scripts, salary information, and even personal details of employees. The kind of information that, once exposed, could ruin careers and lives. It was a full-blown digital heist, and it sent shockwaves through Hollywood and beyond, raising serious questions about the vulnerability of even the most powerful institutions in the digital age. News anchors were reporting on it around the clock, and the story quickly became a global sensation. This wasn't just about a movie anymore. It was about international relations, cybersecurity, and the power of the internet to disrupt, expose, and frankly terrify. The attack highlighted the interconnectedness of our world and the new kinds of threats we face in the digital era. It was a wake-up call for everyone, from government officials to everyday citizens, about the importance of cybersecurity and the potential consequences of neglecting it. The fallout from the attack was immediate and severe. Sony Pictures found itself at the center of a media storm, with every detail of the hack being scrutinized and analyzed. Headlines screamed about the breach, and the public was eager for every new piece of information. Inside Sony, the atmosphere was one of crisis. Executives were scrambling to contain the damage, trying to figure out how to respond to the unprecedented situation. Meetings were held around the clock and the pressure was immense. For the employees, it was a time of uncertainty and fear. Many were worried about their personal information being exposed and the potential repercussions for their careers. The sense of violation was palpable and the morale was at an all-time low. Cybersecurity experts were brought in to assess the damage and prevent further breaches. 
It was a race against time to secure the systems and understand the full extent of the attack. The complexity and sophistication of the hack were staggering, and it became clear that this was the work of highly skilled professionals. The attack also had significant geopolitical implications. The U.S. government quickly pointed the finger at North Korea, leading to a war of words between the two nations. Sanctions were discussed, and the incident added another layer of tension to an already fraught relationship. The public reaction was mixed. Some saw the hack as a serious threat to free speech and artistic expression, while others were more concerned about the security implications. Protests and debates erupted, with people taking to the streets and social media to voice their opinions. In the aftermath, companies around the world took a hard look at their own cybersecurity measures. The Sony hack served as a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities that exist in our digital infrastructure. Many organizations began to invest heavily in upgrading their security systems, hoping to avoid a similar fate. For Sony Pictures, the road to recovery was long and arduous. Slowly but surely, they began to rebuild, implementing stronger security protocols and working to regain the trust of their employees and the public. It was a painful lesson, but one that ultimately made them stronger and more resilient. The Sony Pictures attack was a watershed moment in the history of cybersecurity. It showed us just how vulnerable we are in the digital age and underscored the need for constant vigilance. As Hollywood's lights continued to twinkle, the lessons learned from that fateful night in 2014 remain ever relevant, reminding us that in the world of cybersecurity, the stakes are always high. All right, let's shift gears and talk about something that hits a little closer to home, literally. Imagine this, you wake up one morning, hop in your car to grab your morning coffee, and nothing. The gas station is closed. You check the news, and panic is spreading like wildfire. There's a massive fuel shortage, and it's all thanks to a cyber attack. This wasn't some dystopian thriller, my friends. This was the reality for millions of Americans in May 2021, when the Colonial Pipeline, a critical artery pumping gasoline and jet fuel across the eastern United States, was hit by a ransomware attack. Now you might be thinking, ransomware? Isn't that just annoying pop-ups and locked files? Oh, it can be so much worse than that. In the case of the Colonial Pipeline, it was a full-blown national security crisis. See, the hackers, a group called Darkside, didn't just lock down the pipeline's computers, they effectively held the entire fuel supply of the eastern seaboard hostage, demanding a hefty ransom in exchange for the digital key to unlock the system. From Stuxnet to WannaCry, from the Sony Pictures hack to the Colonial Pipeline attack, these cyber incidents are a wake-up call to how vulnerable we are in the digital age. They highlight the dark side of our interconnected world, where a few keystrokes can have devastating real-world consequences. But it's not all doom and gloom. Remember, the internet, for all its flaws, is still an incredible tool, connecting us in ways we never thought possible and revolutionizing communication. It's up to us to be mindful of the risks, to stay informed, and to take the necessary precautions to protect ourselves and our digital lives. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of cybersecurity. Stay safe online and see you in the next video. Take care.